Hi Sagittarius and welcome to your weekly tarot reading for the week of August. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope that you are doing well. This is a general reading for any sun, moon or rising Sagittarius. We'll take a look at the cards. We'll get a sense of the big ideas or awareness for the week, guidance and possible outcomes. I will also choose a few oracle cards for additional uh, messages or information. Let's just get into it right now. Okay, so we have the Queen of Pentacles. We have uh, this wonderful pentacle energy. Grounded, stable, um, very measured, very uh, planning type of energy, common sense, using your common sense to move forward through life. And so this Queen of Pentacles enjoys and loves nature and enjoys the beauty of the world, particularly is very invested in the beauty of her surroundings. So this may be a week where you're paying attention to how your home looks, your wardrobe, uh, yourself. You may want to treat yourself well, get a pedicure, manicure, you know, hair appointment or something because it's about um, making the most of the environment, of feeling that you're contributing to the beauty around you. So in addition to that, this Queen of Pentacles is also about being very resourceful and the pragmatic energy. So able to, to use resources well and is able to handle many different things, multitasking, job, family, volunteer commitments, you name it, she's on top of it. She's a leader and she's fair and she's compassionate. But most importantly, she is very nurturing. And so she's very loving. And this is the type of energy, whether this is someone in your circle or attributes that you have, someone who reaches out and thinks about others, that if someone was in need, she'd be following up to say, how could I help you? So this pragmatic, grounded energy, beautifying uh, environment and being good and kind to friends and family and loved ones. So then we have the chariot, Major Arcana. This is a card of victory. This is a card of success. So whatever you've been working on, it's going to work out for you. And uh, you can see the charioteer holds the reins to the two horses, the black and white horses. Sometimes this, this uh, duality of black and white means that it's pulling us in different directions. But you have the reins. You have the skill and the talent to control the chariot and the movement and the motion as you make progress. Yes, you may be bumpy at times, it may be challenging, but ultimately you're going to be in the victory lane. And so with the chariot, you know, there's a sense here that this could be literal travel for you this week, that maybe you're headed somewhere or going somewhere. But more often than not, this is a sign of, of rising confidence, having confidence and having mastery being confident in your abilities as you move forward to your goals, to your hopes, and to your dreams. Okay, so we have the Four of Wands. And in this Four of Wands illustration, you see the couple, and there looks like they're in this little secret cove or something. And, and this is a card of, can be a card of engagement, of marriage, of making a commitment. Often we associate the Four of Wands with celebrations, bringing family and friends together for like milestones. So whether it's for an impending engagement or perhaps it's something for you that maybe things are getting more serious with your partner or your loved one, to celebrating others, uh, birthdays, anniversaries, promotions. You know, it's kind of uh, enjoying the reward after all of the hard work. Here's the fun reward. So there is an opportunity here for celebrating and for recognition. And for some of you, this will speak to maybe solidifying a relationship and moving to something more committed or stable. So then we have another Wands card, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, a Ten of Wands. 
It's about burden. It's about hard work. It's about maybe feeling overwhelmed at times. You know, there is a sense of showing strength and determination here, going up this hill, and that you're going to get to that goal regardless. Uh, but there's just something to be mindful of, which is don't overburden yourself. Don't allow yourself to be stressed out and to be exhausted or to take on all of the responsibilities or obligations because then that leads to resentment. It can lead to anger. It can be, it can make you sick because you're tired. So if you can find a way to delegate, try not to do everything yourself. Okay, so we have the Empress, Major Arcana. And, you know, I feel that there's a lot of camaraderie here between the Queen of Pentacles and the Empress. This loving the earth kind of woman, a mother, a mother image, a mother uh, loving sensibility. So with the Empress, you get this feminine energy and she is sexual, she's feminine, she's here pregnant, pregnant with either a child which will resonate with some of you, or pregnant with ideas, the fertile mind, planting seeds, nurturing them, watching them grow, watching your creative uh, passions or juices flow. So the Empress is about caring and consideration and love and compassion, very much similar to the Queen of Pentacles, but she also is... Uh, she enjoys the comfort and the, and the fruits of her labor as well. But there is this indication is to follow your passion, is to take hold of your dreams, to make them happen. Find comfort and find pleasure in what truly speaks to you. This week, if you feel like doing something like taking watercolor classes or, you know, uh, learning how to ride a motorcycle, then follow that lead. Follow the lead to capture the creative and the spirited life that you hope to lead. And for any ideas that you have is to work them through. Don't neglect them. So we have these pretty, uh, I think, powerful cards here. And then we have the Eight of Cups. Water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, and the Eight of Cups is walking away. Walking away from a situation. So a couple things here. There are times in our life when we need to walk away and get some space and to think about what's going on. There's no harm in that. And uh, maybe when we're refreshed and we've had time to consider and to reflect, we can come back. There are other times when it's a situation when we think we have it all and we really are not satisfied or feeling fulfilled and we need to get out of there. We need to go find what's going to make us happy. You know, perhaps the Empress, as you are considering your passions and what you do, may be encouraging you to leave a certain area. There's often, I think, of a way of this, uh, the Eight of Cups could be looked at, that if you were in a in a situation at work where people were gossiping or were nasty, like at lunchtime or whatever, this could really represent getting up and going, taking yourself away from that situation. It's not helping you. It's not serving you. Maybe in time you can go back. But the Eight of Cups is walking away from the position that you're in right now because something is not right. You're feeling unsatisfied or you're feeling that you need to move on. So, you know, and perhaps again, maybe it's a situation where you have felt overburdened, ten of wands, either work, a family dynamic, could be a relationship, but I really don't get a sense here because I think the four of wands is very, very positive for stability, for happiness, for celebrations. Hmm. Let's get a little more information from the oracle cards. This will be for meditation or a focus area for the week.
the sun dancers, joyful activity, celebration of life, and abundance. So this is a lovely card, and you really get a sense of celebration of life with this Four of Wands. That's what the Four of Wands means. It's about a celebration of life. It could be a new path for this couple. Joyfulness, abundance, success here with the chariot of moving forward to a successful place, abundance with the Queen of Pentacles and the Empress. There's a lot of abundance within these illustrations and with this idea, the Queen of Pentacles of finding comfort and pleasure in what she has uh, gotten for herself through work and through the appreciation of, of nature and life. So now let's choose a card for spirit or emotional self. Vulnerability. This is confirmation that you're seeking to tread into the unknown and unfamiliar, unknown comma, in familiar territory where decisions are based more on intuition than rationality. Don't let fear hold you back or allow a misguided sense that feeling vulnerable is somehow a negative condition. So vulnerability, being vulnerable, being open to getting hurt is really a sign of strength. It's a sign of great strength because you're laying it all out there. And, you know, Laying it out there and being vulnerable, you know, I see something with the Eight of Cups and the walking away is that people may not agree with what you're on with your what, what what you're doing, and so there is a sense of vulnerability there that if you, you know, you have to follow your own course, you have to believe in what you're doing, and be open to whatever happens, and you know, let go of of what other people say and what other people do. And finally, let's get a little more information for you for love. Self-worth, healing. So finding, you know, finding the path toward having the confidence in yourself, having faith in yourself, and having belief in yourself. And self-worth certainly is um, accentuated by successes, which help to build confidence, and also by dealing with adversity and dealing with challenges and doing more than your fair share. Uh, Empress and the Queen of Pentacles, it's about love and it's about caring and it's about compassion. And that compassion starts with yourself, is to take care of yourself and find the comfort in your life, find the abundance and the pleasure within your life. This is what I have for you for the week, and I hope that you found something helpful here with this reading. If you did, please subscribe if you haven't already, like, share, or comment, and I hope you have a great week, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.